So it seems that we might be in the weird situation where a random hobbyist in the UK might be able to sell things cheaper than Games Workshop can in many countries in the world. Let's talk about weird Games Workshop price disparities and how it's quite possible that you might be able to undercut Games Workshop. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're once again venturing into the weird world of Warhammer prices, and I just wanted to take a practical look at getting Warhammer for a bit cheaper in countries where Games Workshop charges a lot for Warhammer models, say Australia and New Zealand, but now in particular the US as well. I'm not sure how many people around the globe have been keeping up with UK finance news, but perhaps the Warhammer price disparities are at an all-time high in some places, particularly in the USA, seeing as the pound has lost so much value against the dollar over the past few months. I think it's largely due to the dollar being a bit more resistant to inflation than the pound is when the money printers turn on. Plus there's been a recent thumb blip in UK finance where our government decided to cut a whole load of taxes and borrow a lot of money and markets and the IMF didn't really take it in a very good light, prompting the pounds to fall to historic lows. Obviously the most important consequence of this is that Warhammer is cheaper than ever in the UK now. Games Workshop has historically always charged less in the UK than they have in the USA or Australia often to fairly ridiculous levels, but now with the pound being super weak, it's only amplified those disparities. If you could buy Warhammer with US dollars or Australian or New Zealand dollars, you'd get a lot more plastic for your money compared with buying in your own countries. On top of that, the UK also seems to be one of the best places for discount Warhammer as well. There's a fair bit of competition for third-party retailers, and they often offer discounts anywhere between 10 and 25%, and this can quite often be the best that other countries can offer. I think there's maybe a place in Australia that offers a 20% off, if I'm right, but to my understanding, I think most North American retailers are capped at a maximum of 15% off for online selling. Obviously, I don't live there myself, though, so please correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments below. Between those two factors, it just means that there's an enormous value gap if you can manage to get models overseas. I guess the challenge for those countries, if they do want to try and take advantage of UK prices, is to get cheap models out of the UK efficiently. Something that understandably isn't really in Games Workshop's interest to allow. For example, they prohibit their third-party retailers from shipping to different regions around the world. If they didn't do that, they wouldn't really be able to credibly maintain their very different international prices if, say, they let UK discount retailers ship to the US or to Australia. If they did, basically everyone would just order through UK discounters, as it would be so much cheaper. They can enforce this for their third-party sellers as they get the models at a discount and have an agreement with Games Workshop. They get them at trade prices, where everyone else just gets them how much you pay for them. But to my knowledge, I don't think that there's anything that they could do from stopping individual people reselling their items individually overseas, as of course you don't have to enter into any sort of arrangement with Games Workshop just to pick up a box from a shop or a discount retailer in the UK. There's certainly nothing stopping you on an individual level, say for a casual seller just buying a box and then selling part of it that they didn't want, for example, or buying a box and then deciding that they're not going to use it after a while and then reselling it on eBay and having the option for overseas shipping ticks. I'm a little less certain whether or not there's anything against doing it as a trade, but to my knowledge there probably wouldn't be. If you happen to pick up a lot of Games Workshop products as a business and then resell them, to my knowledge I don't think that there's anything Games Workshop can do to stop you doing that, but they can do things like take issue with copyrighted images. I believe that they use that to take down a whole bunch of Indomitus eBay auctions when people were splitting the box and reselling it once it was getting scalped. I believe if those same retailers just took pictures of the actual things they were selling, then there wouldn't be much they could do against them. That's my understanding anyway. If anyone happens to know more about this than me, feel free to let me know in the comments, and I'll post a pinned comment as a correction. It did just make me wonder whether or not someone who's living in the UK could actually outcompete US prices just by buying through a discounter in the UK, and then just doing as basic a thing as sticking the models on eBay and posting them overseas to the US. If you were buying, say, a Combat Patrol box in the USA, then a Games Workshop it'd be $150, and if you had access to a 15% discount retailer, that might be more like $127.50. Then if you compare that to the UK, say you managed to get a Combat Patrol box for 20% off, that'd be £72 or $81 at current conversion rates. Shipping to the US for a typical Combat Patrol box will be around £20 or $22, that's the price from Royal Mail for a 675 gram package. And then you'd have to account for eBay fees as well, which including PayPal as well would amount to around about $14.50. Theoretically, even with just basic savings like this, you'd have around about a $10 value gap between the two. So in theory, I guess there could be the potential for profit there. 
I think this will become less relevant on smaller kits due to shipping costs making up more of the percentage, but more relevant if you did say a really really big order with multiple boxes, as shipping costs would represent a lower percentage. However, I do think that there's the potential for taxes to ruin any savings that you might get, unless it's marked as a gift, which it really shouldn't be if you're selling it. I understand that you probably have to pay import duty to the US, and that can vary state to state to my understanding. It probably means that overall it's not going to be quite as efficient. Still though, I'm kind of surprised at just how close it gets, and this is just looking at posting literally one box out, and also dealing with eBay fees as well, which are a pretty hefty percentage of sales. Otherwise, just running through a similar example for Australia as well. One of the slightly more expensive Combat Patrol boxes will be 195 Australian dollars if you get the 15% discount. Buying the same thing will be 72 pounds or 124 Australian dollars in the UK. Shipping is actually a bit cheaper to the Australia than the US for some strange reason, and in theory it works out to be around about 176 Australian dollars including delivery, so around about a 19 dollar value gap. Again, the savings might just about be wiped out by any import taxes. Again, with my shaky understanding of Australian tax law, I think there will be a 10% goods and services tax. But it is a bit weird that UK eBay sellers could basically equal some of the best value around from discounters in the other side of the world. Overall, it does seem that any savings are maybe a little bit marginal on eBay. But I feel like if you are picking up any models, particularly in bulk in Australia, New Zealand or the US, it could well be worth a look. Just from a quick search, it does look like for genuinely quite a lot of Games Workshop's products, the cheapest option on paper does seem to be importing from the UK, though of course you'd have to know about taxes and buying off eBay overseas in your local area to see whether or not you need to pay some import duty. Really, the biggest savings will probably be whenever you're looking at people selling a bit lower than cost price for whatever reason, maybe they've just had a kit around for ages and they want to get rid of it, so maybe aren't really too bothered if they don't get absolutely just as much as they paid for it in the first place. Otherwise, it looks like it could become a very credible option if you're doing an absolutely massive order from a trusted seller. If you could make postage a very small percentage of the overall value, it looks like it could be efficient. And perhaps one of the main takeaways is that if you are living in the UK and you're selling models secondhand, it could well be an option to figure out international shipping and how much it would cost. You might have a surprising amount of interest from people buying overseas and trying to get their hands on cheaper UK Warhammer, even if they have to pay lots of postage. I guess for trying to avoid eBay fees, you could look at selling on places with lower fees, usually amounting to social media type places, forums, Reddit or Discord, but in general you would have a lot more risk on these if someone did decide to mess around with you. It would be a lot riskier without as much buyer protection. Otherwise, one idea that did just amuse me a bit was if you happen to actually just be visiting a place where they sell Games Workshop's miniatures a lot cheaper, how much could you possibly save? Say for example, if you're living in the USA or Australia and we're going on holiday to the UK, or somewhere else that's unusually cheap for buying Games Workshop models, say for example Poland and Norway. If you were thinking about picking up any miniatures in the near future, it might genuinely be worth thinking about buying there. Getting UK prices and then potentially 20% off or so from a discounter both seem like good things. You could easily be saving around about a third the cost of the models. Just for my own amusement, I was trying to think just how much you could theoretically do with this, and unless I'm making any mistakes here, I think you can take up to around $800 worth of duty-free goods from the UK. Obviously these ones for personal use and not to resell or anything. That's a net you around about 13 combat patrol boxes from the UK. Really quite a lot of big bulk there, though I suppose if you really wanted to transport them back, you could probably quite easily fit them into a suitcase if you did decide to dispense with the packaging and just take the sprues out of the box. I guess that means that if you did just want a ridiculously massive purchase of Warhammer, you could theoretically save to up to around $250, though obviously that's just not very practical for a whole bunch of reasons, and you'd probably have to pay for an entire case on the plane as well, which isn't going to be particularly cheap. Still though, if you're being a bit more reasonable about things, and just picked up a kit or two, you could at least save a little bit. Just with theoretical maximums in mind, I was just wondering just how many models you'd have to take on a return flight, to justify the entire plane ride across the pond and back again. It does seem that if you're taking a case which you'd probably need for that many models, you'd be looking at something like $570 from the USA to the UK and back again. So even if you did abuse this to the absolute maximum and took no other luggage, you'd still be quite a long way from actually being in profit from flying to the UK and back again. I guess in Super Theory Land though, if you were buying an absolute ton of Warhammer and went with a weird plan like this, a flight to the UK could be a bit more better value than normal if you were trying to save a lot of money. Otherwise, just other potential ideas for getting models out of the UK and across the world, 
You could get gifts from friends and family overseas. I guess having contacts in the UK that can buy cheap Warhammer is just a little bit better than normal. I guess that would avoid eBay fees and import duties, both of which are things that could ruin the value of sending stuff abroad. Another area that I've heard mentioned a couple of times but don't really know much about myself is freight shipping. I imagine it's a fair bit more expensive than it was previously, but if you were getting a massive model order together, that could be one way of getting around expensive airmail postage prices and getting a lot of models together in one go. Just from generally reading about this sort of thing on the internet, I do remember reading something about a company that used to ship things out from the UK to New Zealand so you could order things into one place and then have them shipped out to you. To my understanding though, that one went away sometime during Covid and isn't active any longer though. In any case, let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Any other practical tips for getting UK prices out of the UK are greatly appreciated. I'm also pretty sure I've messed up at least something in terms of taxes and international shipping things. If there's anything that I've got too majorly wrong, I'll try and update the video with a pinned comment below. So please check that out before taking anything said here too much to heart. I think we'll leave that one there for now anyway. If you'd like to see more like this, feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics. I'm sure we'll have plenty more to talk about for Games Workshop's prices in the future. Finally, if you've been enjoying all the videos on this channel, I would just like to mention that All Specs Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and that's what allows me to keep on making videos quite so often. Making daily content does take an awful lot of time and effort, and if you are enjoying a lot, any support is enormously appreciated. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.